Hey guys, it's Rob Seabrook with Paperless X, a channel dedicated to easing your digital transformation. In today's video, we'll be going through the paid features of Todoist to see if it's worth paying a subscription for. If you're new to our channel, hello. Make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications so you know each time we release a new video. And if you're already subscribed, fantastic human, welcome back. Before we get started, we'll look at one free feature that we didn't mention in the previous video as we were still studying it. The productivity tracker is a tracking feature in Todoist that keeps track of all your completed tasks. You can easily view them and the app groups them according to when you completed them. You also have some filters to see your activities in the app which helps. Your productivity tracker shows you daily and weekly goals as well as comma levels. You can set these daily and weekly targets yourself and you can choose the days you want to rest. Karma is a motivation system that rewards you with points as you complete your tasks to reach your daily and weekly goals. You can also earn points using advanced features in the app, which can motivate you to learn how to use the slightly difficult features. We love the idea of Karma points. It just makes you a little bit more excited about getting things done. Now to get into the main part of today's video. Should you pay for Todoist? The pro version of Todoist costs $5 per month if you're an individual and $8 per user per month if you're a business. Both packages are slightly cheaper if you pay for them annually. You can save a few dollars. For the free version, you get five active projects, which can have up to 300 active tasks per project. What are the chances you'll be running more than five projects at once? After testing the free version of Todoist, we found five projects are more than enough to use the app for free forever. Should you need more projects, simply archive or delete completed ones to make room for new projects. Besides, with the organization in the app, you can use sections and subtasks to subdivide projects, so you might not need that many active projects to begin with. There are many ways to organize your to-dos in Todoist that can save you money to avoid the subscription forever. It's ridiculous that reminders in Todoist are a paid feature. If reminders are an important part of your workflow, we recommend looking for a free or one-time purchase app instead. And there's plenty to choose from. Todoist has notifications. If you're already in the app, which you probably will be if you use the app for work, you won't need reminders. For the free version, you can collaborate with five people per project, which is probably enough for planning with friends and family. The pro version extends that to up to 25 people per project. It's a decent number of people for a single project. However, Todoist is the worst to-do app to collaborate with anyone, even friends and family. As the owner of a project, you can't control the permissions of your collaborators. Anyone can remove you from your own projects. That is not the sort of power I want anyone to have over my projects. The free version of Todoist gives you a week of activity history. With the pro version, you have an unlimited activity history. And I've never needed to refer back to tasks from the past, so this is not a feature I'm willing to pay a subscription for. 
To do it has five free themes and the subscription will unlock eight more. Buying a theme once might make sense, though I would never do it. Personally, in all the apps, I always use the default themes. I never change themes. You're only limited to uploading files that are less than 5 megabytes when using the free version. On the pro version, that bumps up to 100 megabytes. Considering that you can use links and share a link in the description, it makes more sense to use cloud services for larger attachments. Filters in Todoist are smart lists. You only get three on the free version and 150 filters on the pro version. It's not really practical to have that many smart lists unless you're a team, of which Todoist is not an app would recommend for teamwork. Besides, filters in the app are a bit difficult to understand. There are apps that have simplified this feature so much it's better to use those other apps for this. Auto backup is very important. Sadly, most to-do apps don't have this feature. They only sync across devices. It's refreshing to see an app that offers this feature. Still, we're not eager to pay a subscription for it for several reasons. The backup files go to the same server containing your to-dos in the app. If anything happens to the server, your backup also gets affected. Completed tasks and archived projects are not included in the backup. It probably doesn't matter for your completed tasks, but archived projects might be important, otherwise you'll have deleted them. You can only have 21 backups going back the last 21 days. And the app only backs up up to 500 comments per task. So it's not backing up everything, just some of the stuff in the app. It is a lot though, so we're a bit torn on this one. We have failed to find one convincing reason to pay a subscription for Todoist. Most of its paid features are either overkill, therefore they're not necessary, you can do without them, or have decent workarounds, which will help you get away with not paying for the subscription. For individuals, you can get away with not paying the subscription forever. And for teams, Todoist is not a business app. Would love to know if you've had a different experience in Todoist. We hope you guys liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Thank you. Fantastic human for watching. See you in the next video.